Here's a quick version. These devices are collectively known as fusible resistors. They came in a variety of styles. Generally, they plug into two terminals. There's a resistance wire inside of these that's designed to burn open when an excessive amount of power goes through it and fail safely. They won't catch on fire. They won't explode. Uh, these serve two purposes. One, to limit the surge current when a set is turned on to protect the solid-state rectifiers, be them be they selenium, germanium, or silicon. And if there's a short and a B plus, say a filter cap shorts out, these will burn open and protect your power transformer. What can you replace them with? Well, they do still make fusible resistors, but you'll have a little trouble, at least I've had trouble, matching the resistance and wattage ratings of these. I've never seen published specs, but they seem to be around 7 or 10 watt. Whereas the modern ones, the best I can find are 5 watt. They do make 7, but nobody seems to carry them. So these are some 4.7 and some 5.6 ohm 5 watt fusible resistors. These aren't quite as robust as these, but you can put two of them in parallel. And if you're using modern silicon rectifiers, they could handle much higher surge current than the originals. So even if you cut it from 5.6 down to 2.5, which is what would be the equivalent if you put two in parallel, this will be 10 watt. So put two of these in parallel to replace one of these, you'll be fine. Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Predicta Restoration Tips. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the fusible resistor, also known as a fusistor, or a fusit, or a number of different brand names, they all boil down to the same thing. It is a combination resistor fuse, that's the name, fusible resistor. Now, all models of Predicta use these, as did many, 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 and most TVs starting mid-50s and continuing on for quite a while. I want to talk about what you can replace them with that's currently made and what the heck are they for. Now there's another component that started being used at the same time as these and that is a solid state rectifier. At first selenium, later silicon. You may have noticed that sets that have tube rectifiers, like this set with the 5U4, they never have these fusible resistors because they don't need them. So why are these needed? Because the early solid state rectifiers could not handle surge current very well. They have other side benefits, but, uh, but I do believe that the primary reason they started using these is to limit that initial surge current when the electrolytic filter caps are discharged. You turn on the set, they look like a dead short. You get a surge of current going through it. You don't get that with tube rectifiers. One, if the tube rectifier is cold, it takes a little while to warm up. But even if it's warmed up and you turn the set off and back on quickly, there's inherent uh, internal resistance in a tube rectifier that the solid state rectifiers don't have, which is the advantage to them is that they're far more efficient. Their on resistance is very, very low, whereas it's tens of ohms in a tube rectifier. It's far, far less in a silicon rectifier. So you get a surge current of hundreds of amps when you turn a set on. Selenium rectifiers can't handle that. They'll blur, they're born, they will burn out, <laughs> as will uh, early silicon. Current silicon rectifiers can handle, I believe, in excess of a thousand amps for like a four. Uh, for sure, a 5408 that's a three amp, thousand volt rectifier. They can really take a pounding. So, uh, if you use something like a 5408, are these still as necessary? I don't think so. Or I think you could get away with a much smaller resistance.
Now the other benefit to these, aside from limiting the surge current, is their fuses. So if there was a short, say the main filter electrolytic capacitor on the B plus supply was to short out, these would go open and protect your power transformer. Although in a lot of cases these were used in series strung sets. For example, the 9L37 and 9L38 predicted chassis. And here's our AC voltage coming in. It goes off in two directions. One goes through a thermistor, the tube filaments, the other side. There's our fusible resistor. And it goes to an electrolytic, and then actually the germanium diodes. Even worse than silicon in terms of their ability to handle surge currents. Notice there's also some small value disk capacitors. Those are to suppress voltage spikes when the diodes turn on and off, I do believe. So they, uh, some of these components are here to protect these fragile early uh, rectifier diodes from failing. They came in a variety of styles. This is a type you could often find in a predictor. It's a flexible thing. Sometimes there's a piece of plastic bridging these and you can grab it and pull it out. Uh, uh, they often go into uh, a little socket. Two pins, that's why you see the ends of these have these little male uh, plugs on them. There's another type. But sometimes they're just wires or they're these long leads with I think these are more type of universal, so you could bend them and twist them to fit them in as needed. For example, these in particular are made by, I think Workman was the name of the company. They made um, replacement parts for TVs. Or is this, I believe, is an OEM part. So what can you replace these with when they do go bad? Because often they will be because either age, these, these can corrode, the terminals start getting green and the coating flakes off. So even if they haven't been damaged from being used in the set, just sitting around they can go bad. But also often people just plug in and turn on an old set and you get that initial surge current. It's even worse because the filter caps haven't been powered up in ages and these blow open. When these blow open, uh, I use that term, they don't it's not like a firecracker explode. Well, <laughs> it can be a little bit violent, but not as bad as, say, a big can electrolytic uh, going. Uh, but I think some of these might have asbestos in them. So if you see one of these blown apart and a bunch of f flaky fibers all over the place, use care in disposing of it, vacuuming it up. Uh, the, might be asbestos, so like in this flexible coating, they're just because <laughs> these do get hot. And there's a reason why they're shaped like this. <laughs> these do get toasty, but not as not as hot as you might think. So that that gets into how they work. It's it's some resistance wire, 5.6 ohm, 4.7 ohm. Those are really common values. So there is a coil of resistance wire. These look like power resistors, right? But they don't get that hot because they're also designed to fail when they get really hot. So they have large surface area to actually dissipate heat. Uh, so under normal operation, this would just be a little bit warm. But if there was a short, these would get really hot and that's when they, the wire uh, burns open. One, assuming you put modern silicon rectifiers in, I can uh, kind of argue they're not as important. Uh, I think you could also buy with a much smaller value. But first, let's just talk about trying to replicate the original. Uh, look on eBay. They are out there. I got lucky and found a stash of these a while ago. They're a little bit more resistance. They're 7.5. Uh, but I've used these in a, in a bunch of projects, but I've only got a few left, so I've been exploring alternatives, and it turns out that they are still made. Um, in fact, a lot of the resistors I have been using, like the PR series, those brown resistors that I use all the time these days, these guys, these are all fusible. And in fact, a lot of metal film resistors are, but that's not their primary 
design feature. It just, uh, I believe it so happens that by their nature, the construction of metal film resistors means they have defined fusible characteristics. That's what they'll call it on the data sheet. They won't promote them as fusible resistors or fusistors. They're just power resistors and they have defined fusing characteristics. So what does that mean? That means that they can estimate that, hey, if a certain amount of power is going through this resistor, it's going to open and it's going to open safely, meaning it's not going to catch on fire, it's not going to explode, it's just going to open up like a fuse. Okay, cool. So they make modern resistors that are fusible, so we just use pop these in and we're good, right? I got some 5.6 ohm uh, done. But look how small they are compared to these. Now, there's a problem. I've never found any technical specifications for these guys. I don't know what current or what wattage these are designed to fail open at. Okay, well, let's just do something reasonable. Well, I didn't know for sure what the B plus current draw was, but I noticed on the SAMS photo fact for the 10L43, it says 310 milliamps near the fusible resistor. So I figured, okay, B plus current is around 300 milliamps, right? So, let's figure out the power dissipation. So, let's go, point 0.3 power is current squared times resistance. So, point 0.3 times point 0.3 times 5.6 ohms. That's only half a watt. And these are 2 watt resistors. They should work fine. In fact, maybe they're too high a wattage. Turns out, pop one of these in, we'll go up and smoke. Why? Because the current draw is higher. It's actually closer to an amp. Let's just let's, let's just round it up and just say it's an amp. Okay, current squared. One times one is one times 5.6, 5.6 watts. Okay, well, hey, guess what? They make 5 watt, 5.6 ohm resistors. Fusible resistors. And this brand is a little different than these. These are actually marketed as fusible resistors. Well, I have used these. I have tried using these and here's the result after running in a set for a while. <laughs> Notice it's a little discolored. Uh, and I uh, posted on Facebook about this and a reader tried it and he ran a set longer uh, that consumed a little bit more power and this just really discolored and started to fail. It's not good enough. So they're, it's dissipating just about 5 watts or slightly above. That's kind of right at the edge where it's starting to fail. So what, what is the failure wattage or current? <sighs> it's the problem with fuses. Well, let's just talk fuse for a second. A 1 amp fuse, what does that mean? It doesn't mean that if you go to 1.0001 amps, it blows open instantly. No, you could have one and a half amps. You could have two amps going through it. It won't blow. It'll start to glow. It'll start to fail, depending on whether it's a fast blow or slow blow. It will fail eventually, but it has to be a certain amount over its rating to fail. So, like with these, five watt. If it hit 5.1 watts, does it immediately fail? No. It'll work for a while. Now, the idea being that these are in case of catastrophic failure, like a dead short, in which case there's going to be amps going through this, and there's going to be tens of watts, and then in which case it will fail very quickly. Uh, but it's a drag because it's right at the edge of working. And they do, the manufacturer does make 7 watts, that's as high as they go. Nobody carries a 5.6 ohm 7 watt fusible resistor on the planet that I can find. Okay, as I mentioned, the solid state rectifiers, they can take a higher surge current. Great, so let's use a smaller value resistor is I squared R. So we've got our 1. Well, how about we go to 2.2, 3.3. Can't find them in 5 watt. The best I could find is 4.7. 
Ah, wrong resistors. I meant to grab these. So, same family, same manufacturer and all that, but these are 4.7. If I can get smaller, as I said, someday I'll use them, but these will work. I, I've run a set for hours with these. They do get a little toasty, because they're going to be dissipating near their limit, but not at, not over. If you had poor ventilation, you know, it's, it's not ideal. I don't mean to make it sound like everybody should run out and use these. Either 7 watt or use smaller resistance if you can find them. It's so annoying that uh, they're made, they're, they're used in all kinds of devices, you just wouldn't know it, but lots of appliances and that have them, but they're usually much smaller resistance, like a less than 1 ohm. Now there is another option. You could take a power resistor and put little plugs on it and you could just use this or if you still want the fusing action put a fuse in series with this I've seen plenty of people do that and again the same wattage so in this case I would go 7 watts 10 watts use 4.7 5.6 ohms uh, again because modern rectifiers can handle the punishment especially if you're replacing silicon or germanium rectifiers uh, you don't have to worry about adding extra resistance because they're more efficient or anything, because the efficiency is about the same. Uh, but they can handle more of a surge current, so I think you can use a much smaller resistance. Selenium is another story, unfortunately, because silicon rectifiers are a lot more efficient. Either you can have the set run with a B plus that's a few tens of volts higher than it was designed for, or you're going to have to add a much larger resistance. So I think what sometimes guys don't realize is that like there may very well already be a fusible resistor in the set and they'll, they'll add an additional power resistor in series with it. You can just replace a fusible resistor with one with a higher resistance and kill two birds with one stone. You don't have to add any extra terminal strips or modify anything, just increase the value of the fusible resistor. Instead of a 4.7 or 5.6, put it at 10, a 15, a 20. Again, though, you might have an issue with wattage. Now, something else you can do, you can double these up. So, uh, another suggestion I have that uh, I've also done is, because these are right at the limit and they start to fail, put two of them in parallel. And then you'll have effectively 2.56 ohms, uh, and it's a 10 watt instead of a 5 watt. In fact, that right now, in, until uh, some of these smaller values or higher wattages become available, I would recommend, say, take two of these and put them in parallel. I think that about covers it. I will put a link in the description to where you can find these. Don't do what I see sometimes in these old sets when these have burned out and they just wrap some heavy gauge wire around it. These are there to both protect the set, to protect you, uh, replace them with something equivalent 